Hello loved one, welcome in this vlog. Uh, again, it's great to be with you and to be able to uh, build up each other and one another with the word of God. So let's continue within this unbelievable uh, uh, series called the huge gigantic expectation of the body of Christ and of course this is one of the important topics that uh, that we that, that we could use for our inspiration and especially to hold on to especially in these trying and uh, doubtful so to speak doubtful times dark times as well <clears throat> so let's uh, continue uh, with our topic uh, we are now um, we have now um, come to a topic called the parable of the olive tree that Paul used and I will go uh, through it sharing my opinion regarding that so that you understand the the ratios and the, the, the comparisons between Israel and the body of Christ, so to speak. So let's let's go over to the slides. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the last vlog we already read this passage, Roman 11, verse 15 to 28. So now we will start. So the wild olive branch that um, represents the nations collectively so this is singular the olive bow or branch is singular so the nations are represented collectively so it's like an all or nothing situation so either all nations uh, have access to blessings and God's grace and of course not everyone believes and of course not everyone believes the same way so I'm talking about the one who received the ones who received faith from God of course by believing uh, the truths that are written in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 4 especially 3 to 4 in a certain way so that's the basis uh, on which a person or a, a human can be a member of the body of Christ or not so <clears throat> again uh, it's an all or nothing situation so if that one olive branch is hewn out of the tree meaning that means that in one instance all the nations do not have access anymore and that will happen so the reason why uh, uh, why the one a uh, nations uh, sorry the one branch is still uh, grafted in you will see in the third bullet point let's continue <clears throat> so the natural olive tree the whole tree represents Israel the wild olive branch so again singular is grafted into the natural olive tree with the same leaves and the same fruit because of faith again that wild olive branch produces the same leaves and the same fruit because of faith faith given by God so Paul also mentions in his parable the root that is carrying that are, that are the roots that are carrying the bows so the root of the natural olive tree is the fathers of Israel who are the root of the blessings uh, uh, to whom God has promised them so the fathers of uh, the fathers of Israel being 
Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The, what is the fatness of the root? That's the blessing. And then specifically the covenant promise that God made to Abram because of his faith. And of course, for which he was justified, justified by faith. And the fulfillment of God's promise that in Abram all nations would be blessed. So that's important to, to realize. So let's, let's take a look in Genesis 12, 3 and 18, 18. Uh, Genesis 12, 3. There you read, I, I shall, God says, God says, I shall indeed bless those blessing you, and I shall curse the one maledicting you. In you, all the families of the ground will be blessed, says God to Abram. Let's go to 18, verse 18. There it says, Abraham, he shall become, yeah, become, a great and staunch nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. When will it happen? It will happen in the next eon, the fourth eon. That will happen then. So it's, it's not fulfilled yet. Let's go. Uh, let's see. I will... I will do it together with you now because I I totally forgot to uh, make you read along. So 12 verse 3 where God says to Abraham, I shall indeed bless those blessing you and I shall curse the one maledicting you in you all the families of the ground will be blessed. And 18 verse 18 says, Abraham, he shall become, yeah, become a great and staunch nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. <clears throat> okay. So, let's continue. Um, with the next one. So, the fulfillment of this promise of God to Abraham was secured by the obedience of Abraham. So you can read it in Genesis 22:18, which we will read together as well. Therefore, it is the root that bears the wild olive branch and not the other way around. As Paul rightfully says in Romans 11:18, eh, the passage which we read together in the previous vlog. So let's read Genesis 22:18. That's here. Oops, here. And there it says, "And all the nations of the earth will bless themselves in your seed, inasmuch as you have hearkened to my voice." So that is the reason God is providing why um, why all nations will of of the earth will bless themselves in abraham's seed so to speak <clears throat> okay so this promise was also confirmed to isaac and jacob very important so let's read because this is we have to really uh, establish that it's true right so Genesis 26, 4, 4 says, I will increase your seed like the stars of the heaven, heavens, sorry, and I will give to your seed all these lands. All nations of the earth will bless themselves in your seed. Who is Abraham's seed? Who is Abraham's seed? That's Isaac. But also... God says the same to Isaac uh, because if you read f f uh, earlier uh, there was a uh, famine 
then um, let's say let's see where was it uh, the days of Abraham ta, 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 and Isaac went to Abimelech uh, then Yahweh appeared to him and said you must not go down to Egypt sojourn in this land and I shall be with you and bless you etc and here you see where where God says and I will carry out the oath that I swore to your father Abraham that's the one I was looking for so um, let's see is there another one yes there's another one because there's also Jacob oops is this good no yeah this is good also Jacob received this promise so let's read that in 28 verse 14 where God says and your seed so it's also to Jacob let's um, establish uh, ta, 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 ta. yeah here let's start with verse 13 and uh, behold Yahweh was standing up over him and said I am Yahweh Elohim of your father Abraham and the Elohim of uh, Isaac do not fear the land on which you are lying down to you I shall give it and to your seed and now verse 14 and your seed will become like the soil grains of the land you will breach forth westward and eastward uh, eastward northward and southward all the families of the ground will be blessed in you and in your seed so that's the promise that god gave jacob as well so temporarily throwing away and that's what verse 15 says of romans 11 temporarily throwing away the Israelite majority not the minority but the majority is the reconciliation of the world so uh, it's important to to uh, to know that to establish that and also the parable this parable also refers to the Ecclesia from the nations because of their faith because if you look at all the nations you cannot tell me that all the nations are in faith no the majority does not have received faith it's only the ecclesia out of the nations uh, uh, to whom paul is directing his evangel they have received faith and the parable refers also to them and to that phase of development in which the body of Christ at that time still was. <clears throat> it's also important to realize that. So, uh, if, you, if you realize that, then you also see that those who are justified, look at Romans 8, 1, are the same people who are conciliated as you can read in 2 Corinthians 5, 9, uh, 19. Let's read it together. Let's first read in Romans uh, 8, 1. There it says, Nothing, consequently, is now condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not according to flesh are they walking, but according to spirit. And 2 Corinthians 5, 19. How that God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and placing in us the word of the conciliation. That's what I meant when I said <coughs> that <coughs> those who are justified the same are, on, are also conciliated as a next step. So let's go to the third slide regarding this parable. So what is the current situation? 
the natural branches branches are still yun out they are still yun out because of their unbelief because god has hardened the heart of israel as a majority so the wild branch will definitely the singular wild branch will definitely be cut down it will be hewn out for unbelief but when will that happen when that's an easy one because immediately after the snatching away of the believers remember the believers from the nations if that happens what remains on earth in the nations is unbelief so if all the believers are snatched away in one instance from the earth what will be left over only unbelief and then from that moment on god will continue his plan his work with israel his operation with israel he will remove the hardness from their heart and there it will start that a lot of people will uh, receive faith they will believe so from then on god will continue his plan for israel by removing their hardness and blindness and preparing them for their role in the millennium it's not so simple as i'm saying it now because there are some some issues but this is uh, more or less the big picture and from that same time the nations who will remain on earth no belief unbelief they will again have a second rate position a secondary or a second range position in which they will receive blessings only through israel just like the situation was in the pentecostal period remember in the beginning uh, a period of uh, of acts the book of acts in that period uh, nations gentiles could only um, uh, be blessed through israel remember that uh, philip uh, 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 what's his name philippus was called uh, to the eunuch of ethiopia to be baptized uh, P peter was called uh, simon peter was called to cornelius the centurion the roman centurion in order to be uh for the spirit to come upon him etc etc so it has to be done through israel so these proportions of the priority nation israel and the secondary nations having a secondary position it will hold throughout the fourth eon and possibly also part of the fifth eon because also in the fifth eon israel will reign together with christ okay so <clears throat> um let's do one more slide one more slide <clears throat> timing of the snatching away now we enter the core of our topic i i realize that just before the first seal like i already mentioned right in this series so let's read this quickly 2 thessalonians 2 verse 3 no one just to to understand what's happening paul says to the thessalonians no one should be deluding you by any method for should not the departure be coming first and the man of lawlessness be unveiled the son of destruction and verse 6 and now you are aware what is detaining for him to be unveiled in his own era for him to be unveiled in his own era so first the departure 
<clears throat> then the unveiling of the end time leader. So I translated this word departure. What do I mean? In order to explain this easy and with enough time, I propose to end this vlog again. I'm sorry about that because otherwise it will be too long again and then continue in the next one. Again, thanks for watching and hopefully seeing you next time.